Welcome to the meeting. This is a work session confirmation hearing on a new chief of police. Let's go around the room and identify ourselves for the record. We'll start with you, Mr. Falsey. Bill Falsey, Municipal Attorney. Mike Abbott, Municipal Manager. Chris Tolley, Chief of Police. Elvie Gray Jackson. Dick Tran. Pete Peterson. Tim Steele. Okay, Chris. Tell us about yourself. You're put in for chief of police. Listen to your philosophy on community policing, cap team, everything we need to know about you. Okay. I've been married for over 34 years to my best friend, Patricia. We have two wonderful children. The oldest is Grant and the youngest, Sarah. The occupation of law enforcement breaks many families apart. One of my first units in law enforcement has seven officers and sergeant. I was the only one that had not been divorced. Our children have thrived from our career due to their exposure to so many cultures, beliefs, and ways of life experienced through each of the assignments. I've learned and developed from my children, adapting with them each time. Grant uh, did his undergrad studies at the University of Hawaii, Manila, a BA in English with a minor in French, and then went on to earn a BS in botany. He then uh, received a scholarship to uh, Yale, where he did his master's degree and four degree in department studies. And right now he's at the uh, Georgetown University halfway through law school where he is uh, in a uh, law review. He was recently married this uh, past Mother's Day. His wife he met while he was at Yale. She works for a small law firm uh, in Georgetown. My daughter Sarah did her undergraduate studies at the University of Colorado in Boulder. She uh, spent a semester abroad in Madagascar, where she wrote an undergraduate thesis and ended up graduating from Nevada. And she is now a National Science Foundation fellow at UCLA, uh, where she's about halfway through her doctoral fellow. And uh, she's spending eight months right now in uh, Copenhagen for her external part of her Her uh, PhD is in evolutionary biology and ecology. Professionally, I spent six years with the Baltimore City Police Department and another 28 years with the Drug Enforcement Administration. The last four here in Anchorage as a special agent in charge of Anchorage and Alaska. The Chief's role, I will have complete policy control over the department. I will have direction and supervision of the deputy chiefs who will have operational control. I will not be conducting policing tasks, but conducting leadership tasks which I have more than 30 years of experience doing. APD needs a chief leader, not a chief officer. I'm not here to hand out tickets, but to make sure the department runs efficiently and that we do the best job possible protecting our community, making it safe, secure, and strong. My objectives as chief, as chief of police is to increase the size and diversity of the police force while establishing best practices which will allow for the implementation of community policing, making a safe, secure, and strong Anchorage. Through the success of these tasks, we will be able to address more complex issues, such as gang violence, working with community partners to get residents off the streets, navigate the legalization of marijuana, and address the substance abuse problems that, led to, that lead to crime, making Anchorage a safe, secure, and strong community. Okay. Thank you, Chris. You didn't tell us about your best friend. My, my spouse. Yes. My wife. Yeah. Um, does she work in the house or does she? I mean, your kids sound back. outstanding. I'm wondering where she, where did they get the brains from? My my uh, wife definitely nurtured their children. Uh, spent a lot of time with them, so on. Very very fortunate. She comes from a family of five girls. All five have or are still working for the FBI as well as. Uh, My other brother-in-law, retired Baltimore City Police Officer, he's still working as a court clerk in Maryland. And then my father-in-law, who's no longer with us, has uh, spent 25 years as a footman in the Baltimore City Police Department. That's an outstanding you. family, Chris. Thank you, sir. Elby, you got a question, ma'am? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Um, welcome, Chris. It's I'm good to see you. you. Um, on a personal note, I've heard some really, really good things about you from um, a couple of friends of mine whose opinion that I highly value. Um, and I appreciate the fact that you talked about APD needing leadership skills because I can't agree with you more. Um, that's what the department needs right now. And so um, in, in terms of um, the police leader, if you will, or manager, whatever you want to call um, that position, I don't think it necessarily has to be um, somebody who's just one officer. That department needs leadership. Uh, it is hurting, and, um, and that's what I'd like to see. So with that said, my question is, um, what's the first thing that you would do or change at APD? So Thank you. Uh, right now, I'm trying to observe. I'm getting out and doing, conducting unit meetings and uh, learning what each department is, I mean, each unit is doing, as well as uh, going to fall out and other gatherings where, where the uh, staff is, is brought together. Additionally, I'm just going around the building and walking into units unannounced and I'm trying to learn as much as I can about it. Uh, because of my experiences in, in, in different uh, settings and so on, I've had the advantage to see what works and what doesn't work and to make the department accountable and as transparent as possible. So I, what I'm trying to do is go and figure out who the best future leaders will be, how to promote leadership from within the department, and have a progression of leadership. And with that solid foundation of leadership, then take on projects such as community policing and, and other areas. Mr. Chairman, if I may follow up. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have you done any ride-alongs yet? I've not been on a ride-along in the department. Okay. Are you planning on doing yes, any right on? I, I, I made a commitment when I got elected in 2008 that I would do one every quarter, and I did it for a while, but now I'm afraid. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to, to hearing about your experience in ride-alongs. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Peterson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, and I was just wondering, you, you know, looking at your background the last 24 years, I think you said, with the DEA. Um, and the fact that we have, uh, are working through um, building regulations uh, locally and statewide for the legalization of marijuana, I'm I'm wondering where how uh, what, what, what's your philosophy, I guess, of, about this? Since you've been spending the last quarter of a century trying to enforce drug laws, and now we're creating laws to make some of those drugs legal, how you know how, how do you feel about that? So if I may, I'm going to include spice in that also, because I know that's a concern of the city and the assembly. The assembly did a great job helping us address this price issue that came about our community a few years ago. Through your assistance, we were able to eliminate it from retail establishments. Since then, then spice has gone underground into the black market. Dealers are transient on the streets. We will continue to investigate the team as first responders. The safety of our community is the number one priority. Subsequently, we will continue to work to protect the public and work with the Anchorage Fire Department to address the current problem. We will need to work with the assembly on this. We need the assembly to give us some bigger teeth in our bite. Right now, we have the $500 fine and so on for this place, which is very effective in, in stopping the sales in commercial establishments individuals that are coming from the valley and coming from other communities around uh, Anchorage become problematic when it's just the citation. Additionally, we seek help from other organizations from the state, municipality, and community to address these substance issues that our community is struggling with. The voters of Alaska legalize marijuana. Our job is to enforce the laws. We do not degrade them. We will work with our assembly in our community on this reform. Public safety is, again, our top priority. We want to make sure our citizens are not driving in care or our youth are using this substance. I cannot speak any longer as a federal agent. I now work for this community and will work with the community leaders in crafting how they want to reflect the will of the residents and make sure our community is safe. I can also add that as of August this year, we've issued 30 citations for consuming marijuana 
in public places, and we have received 107 calls for calls of service regarding marijuana's claims. Thank you. Need anything else? No, that's, that's it. Kim? Yeah, uh, the, um, the comments on SPICE are, are good, but I think this time is a little bit different in terms of uh, how quickly they seem to change the makeup of the SPICE. And uh, so it seems to me that there's got to be some form of real quick turnaround to be able to analyze uh, what's there and what the person's suffering from. Um, that's a comment, but I'd like to have some comments on that. But what I really wanted to talk about was community policing. Uh, I'd like to hear, uh, it's a good catchphrase, it, it, uh, but how you might implement it here in Anchorage, we do have a component of it with the school resource officers, and uh, I'd like to hear whether or not you support that and how you see that going. Community policing concentrates on preventing crime and eliminating the atmosphere of fear it creates. The community policing reduces crime and increases public safety through community partnerships and proactive problem solving, rather than simply responding to crimes once they've been committed. With a focus on community partnerships and engagement, we, we mean police and residents, will empower each other to create a safer community. We want to enhance our officers' crime fighting capabilities by giving them knowledge, tools, and resources to do so. The, there are three major components of community policing. First, community partnership, then organizational transformation, and problem solving, which makes up the acronym COP. What a novel name. <laughs> a community partnership is a collaboration and engagement between the departments and other residents and organizations to recognize problems and solve and develop solutions. Organizational transformation requires a change in police and tactics with a focus on engagement and project, proactive rather than reactive response to issues. One of the units I've had the pleasure of meeting with already is school resource officers. And uh, it, it is really amazing what they do. And uh, I know they don't like to be referred to as community policing, but they do engage in some of the same techniques and so on. Uh, when I was meeting with the over 20 officers, uh, which have a tremendous amount of responsibility, two officers for high school, let's say in middle schools, and each of them have seven or eight elementary schools, that's a lot of work. I asked a group how many of them came up through the anchor school system, which about a third of them do. I was amazed at the number of those that teach in the school as well as coach and do other activities. I was also noticed of how invested they are in the community. Some have children in the schools, the very schools that they work at, and some uh, definitely develop relationships and, and, and uh, uh, a sense of belonging with and, and responsibility for the students in the schools. I was very sad to hear about some suicides and other tragic events that obviously affected the officers too. They were that committed to what they were doing. When I was a patrolman in Baltimore City, one of my best assignments, and I had a couple of them, uh, <coughs> foot assignments, and I served in uh, neighborhoods as a foot patrolman. This allowed me to walk into businesses, get to know the individuals in these businesses. So then when I observed something out of place, after hours or two or three o'clock in the morning, I knew where to call, who I'd be talking to, and I wasn't a stranger to them, and they would help me figure out if something was happening or not. Plus, it allowed them to respond to assist us in keeping us from wasting a lot of time standing by location and so on and so forth. It, it's a great concept. However, our largest challenge is finding the workforce that can do the community policing, which would take approximately 30% best police practices for 30% of unobligated time allows police officers from going from call to call, spending that time in their community, making contact with the community. As Just, far as your SPICE issue, yeah. uh, when SPICE first hit our community about four years ago, we got the state crime lab, the uh, lab officials from the North from the uh, Northwest Crime Lab from the federal government out of San Francisco to come up and 
we brought in the uh, local prosecutors, the municipal attorney's office, and the U.S. attorney's office. And uh, for a lot of this, it was an educational process because it is a very complex issue, the spices and gas laws. The biggest challenge with it is the drugs are constantly altered. So this one batch that the, that the uh, clandestine uh, uh, lab is making up and, and trying to reduce this product, the next batch could be different because it wouldn't have the same percentages. It's not FDA regulated. They're not carefully measuring these things out in flask. And quite candidly, they might run out of one item and put another in. But they also do this as a strategy. They're slightly altering it to stay outside of the wall. The federal government has some uh, laws in place which we should maybe take a look at and consider. And again, above my head, my mind, in that it really takes a chemist and so on to know the actual makeups of these drugs and so on that, uh, that, that goes into them. But they have what they call an analog an analog uh, part of the wall, which any drug that looks like or is intended to be like another drug that is considered a controlled substance. So I, I think it'd be important in the next stage to maybe get our labs and the chemists talking again and looking at some of those things and then seeing if we can come up with some other tools that the assembly or the lawmakers uh, could do to help with this problem. Thank you. I have another one. If Go ahead. <laughs> I've got a few, but I'll wait to um, um, Ms. Greg Jackson uh, mentioned her ride-alongs with APD, and uh, I know in the ride-along that I took not too long ago, um, I was on the, uh, the afternoon shift, whatever it is, 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, and it, it works out, you know, they're doing 10 to 12-hour shifts uh, when it comes, uh, comes time to write the reports up and everything. But um, we were literally going from item to item. We were, uh, I think, 12 items uh, behind when we hit the street and uh, never caught them. Uh, never had the luxury of being able to do, uh, chase a speeder down and give them a ticket or whatever we were going from call to call. And that was the, that was the sign of not enough people. And uh, I sure hope you do well on recruiting so I can build it back uh, as quickly as you can with, uh, with the very fine people that we do have in the so. so at the current time, the goal of the mayor and the department will be to increase our police force to around 400 sworn officers and get them to the 30% on obligated time. Un unobligated time, again, allows flexible ability for officers to be proactive in increasing public safety instead of reactive, going forward. Nothing, Pete? Chris, I got a question for you. I've been doing this for a while. The biggest problem I've seen is a police department has no morale due to things like AO 37. It used to be we were the premier law enforcement agency. We turned people away from the state troopers. They wanted to come here because we had a good retirement system. They were treated decently. But with AO 37, I saw officers leave here, take the retirement with them, go to other towns. How can we change that? Because until you get a grip on the morale of our officers on the street, we have a real problem for this police department. So that's not unique to Anchorage. We see that in a lot of police departments. We see that in a lot of other public service sector positions and so on. Uh, just the conversations today, all the great things that come out of the Pope visiting the United States and talking about it. The House Speaker announces that uh, he is no longer chair of that, and uh, a lot of us talking about a government shutdown and so on. No doubt that it's tough being stores of money and, and uh, physically responsible, physically responsible uh, keepers of funds and so on, and protecting uh, the uh, money that is spent by the government. With that being said, uh, I, I think it's important to have a balanced life in our personal lives as well as our work lives. And, and people have to be well when they come to the job and ready to work. Also, I think there's often generalities out there. And when I'm talking to the groups of officers and other 
members of the department, they will bring up situations saying morale's bad or morale problems. What I try to do is move the conversation to what about morale? What are the specific reasons that we feel down about something? And by identifying those things, let's make an effort. I know I can't promise them that we'll be able to change everything and fix everything, but let's make a, an effort to, to overcome each one of these things and not talk about general problems. Let's identify individual problems, such as retirement. If that's a problem, what can we address to do that? Let's get the union involved, let's get the department involved, and let's get the lawmakers involved so that we can find that proper balance. Good, because we're looking forward to working with you on this. I mean, I watched the retirement system go from a model retirement system to what they've got now, tier four. Yes, sir. That is garbage. More than happy to work with you on trying to come up with a modified retirement system that we can afford. But the other hand, tracks people to want to work for the city as a police officer. Because when they strap that uniform and go out on the street, they don't need to worry about us having their back. I want to make sure they understand we support them fully. And relative to you going out, would you please try at least once a month, or once they were enough to ride with the officers, more than just a photo op? Because in talking to other, talking to officers on the street, they felt that the police chief was just show when there's a camera nearby. I want you to be more than that, okay? And you and I talked about uh, the Second Amendment. And we're gonna we understand each other on that. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything, Elby? No, thank you, Chairman. Questions? Um, Last no. chance. Well, the <laughs> the um, the concern I had was uh, again Dick mentioned the retirement system and the defined benefit defined. Uh, well, I know they they still have a defined benefit. But they, um, they have a five-year vesting, and the problem was we, we would have classes, but we couldn't keep up with the fact because the folks would get to their five years and they'd go outside and find a department uh, in Montana or somewhere that, um, that, that gave them a defined benefit program and, uh, and uh, that take that good training that we gave them and, uh, and head out. So we were not only losing those at the retirement age, but we were losing the young guys too. And so the recruiting is so important, but if we're not retaining officers, the recruiting uh, could be a revolving door. I, I believe the uh, state that we're losing a lot of our officers to right now is Colorado, where they're giving them time in service if they're going out in three or four or five years. They're getting credit for that and tenure and uh, also longevity. Uh, so th those are big challenges for us. These are new things. I mean, we face those challenges in, in all branches of the government, meaning uh, the local, the state, the federal systems. But uh, ultimately, that's up to the community to make the commitment to fix that. If I was concerned about uh, equality of training, uh, I would say we uh, we should just try to recruit folks from, from down south to come up here. But I am concerned about the quality, and I think we do a good job. And, and uh, when we recruit people here, the people here have a commitment. But um, um, we got to do something to to arrest that uh, uh, folks leaving for those reasons. Yes, sir. Getting back to recruiting for a second, we're the largest Native community in Alaska. Is here. But when I take a look at the statistics to tell me how many Native Americans we have as police officers, we're not getting into them. So let us know what we can do to help you. I want to make sure our police force is reflective of our community as it relates to the officers on the street. Pete? Well, I just have one specific question about a problem they've been having down in the close to the Brother Francis shelter where the they've been coming out and supplying spice routinely and almost every afternoon from what I've been told have have has, has the police department been able to arrest any of those people or what's the situation down there now we do have individuals assigned to and, and 
investigate that and you are gathering information, I don't think it would be right to talk about the actual investigation and so on. Uh, we're also doing our best to work with the fire department and other sources to gather information as well as the, the uh, lab and so on to analyze to see if we can identify possibly where items are coming from and things like that to see if there's something bigger to this. Uh, All right. Great. Thank you. Anything else, Sean? Elvie? Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got no questions. So we look forward to your confirmation on Tuesday. This meeting's over with. Thanks for being here.